in the midst we give me some emojis let me know that you're happy to be here tonight uh as we're about to study a portion of god's holy and divine word um i, I want you to know tonight we are uh, we are we were supposed to be ending our series uh on spirits that hinder the church i had a little shift today uh in my message uh tonight i planted on teaching one thing <laughs> but there's been a shift in my message so y'all have to bear along with me uh, we're going to talk about community, and we're talking about us as the people of God, but uh, this has been weighing on me, uh, this particular message. Um, I was going to talk about the spirit of Absalom tonight, uh, but I but I may have to postpone that. I believe that, that God has another word tonight, and I want to be obedient to the voice of God, and I want to be able to share something with you that I believe that will bless your hearts and bless our hearts as a people, I pray, and it's my prayer that you have come with the, the mindset that God speak to this community. God is going to speak to you tonight, and I pray that you will hear him uh, as an engage into community. He's not just talking to you. He's talking to us. He's talking to the Northwest Church, and uh, he wants us to hear something from him Pacific tonight, and so I want to be, uh, God bless me as in my study time with him and in my uh, uh, talking with God and him talking back to me. Uh, I want to be able to share something I believe that'll bless you. If you have your Bibles tonight, what I want you to do, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 5 tonight. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. Meet me at 1 Peter chapter 5. And what I want to do, I want to read verses 6 through 11, and I'll be reading from uh, the New Living Translation tonight. 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, verses 6 through 11. Uh, if y'all are y'all ready to say amen tonight or type amen, let me know that you're ready to receive God's engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. 1 Peter chapter 5, and here was, here's the word, what the word of God says. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Um, so humble yourself under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, watch this, at the right time, he will lift you in, up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God. Let me say that again. Give all your worries and cares to God. Somebody need to hear that right there. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. And be strong in your faith. Did you hear what I just said? Be strong in your faith. Remember that your fa that the family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, oh, y'all read the Bible too, too fast. After you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you in a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. May God bless the word tonight. Tonight, I, I want to, uh, this is what God has given me, the shift tonight. This Tonight, what I want to talk to us about tonight, I, I want to talk to us about don't miss the blessing in the burden. 
Yeah, that's what I want to talk about tonight. Don't miss the blessing in the burden. Somebody put that in the chat box for me. Uh, and God is gonna, God is gonna bless somebody tonight. I, I can feel it already. God is gonna talk. He already talked to me. He already shared it with me. He already encouraged me. And tonight I want to give it back to you. This is my this was my own personal study. This is my own had nothing to do with me preparing a sermon. It has everything to do with God talking to me. And I want, I want to share with what God gave me. Don't miss the blessing in the burden. T -t tonight, tonight, brothers and sisters, I, I think uh, it, it may sound strange and it it may sound crazy because how can you put burden and blessing in the same sentence? Uh, if, 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 if you're like me, my brothers and my sisters, nobody wants to experience burdens. Nobody wants to go through suffering and depression and ups and downs. Nobody wants to go through the tragedies of life. No, nobody want to be between a rock and a hard place. I mean, it, it, it don't sound right because how can blessings and burden go, go together? And, and, and if it was up to us tonight, we would never go through anything. I, I wish I had some Be Real Saints. If, if, if it was up to you and I, we would never, ever have a sad day. We would never, ever have to struggle with anything. We would never have to suffer. If it was up to us, we'll never have uh, days of depression. If, if it was up to us, we'll never have days of sickness. If it was up to us, we'll always be able to pay our bills on time. Come on in here. If, if, if it was up to us, we would never, ever have to experience this thing called suffering. Uh, however, somewhere, somehow, God in who he is, God in being the alpha and the omega, the God who's the beginning and the end, the God who sees all things and knows all things. Somewhere God has put suffering on our agenda. And, and, and oftentimes as God has put suffering on our agenda, you and I, we don't really deal with suffering well. We, we, we don't deal with we don't deal with hard times well. We don't deal with difficult days. We don't deal with those days well. But somewhere, somehow, God in his infinite wisdom, God, some way, somehow, he has, He wants us not to miss the blessing in the burden. It, 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 I, know, I know you don't like how that sound. I know you wish it was getting better for you. I know right now some of y'all in a storm right now. Some of y'all, some of y'all in the midst of it. Some of you all been praying about it. Some of you all been asking God to take it away. And here is what God wants you to know tonight. God has put you in that place for a reason. Wherever you are right now, I want you to know it is ordained by God. Did you hear what I just said? I, I want you to know I don't care who it is and what they've done. I don't care what tragedy is going your way, what you're struggling with. I want you to know if you are in a place where you feel like you can't make it, if you are in a place right now where you feel like it's so heavy on you, if you are in a place where it seems like the pain is unbearable, I want you to know you are exactly what God wants you to be. In other words, what God is trying to get us to see as king, a kingdom community, he's going to show, show us a blessing even in the burden. Now, I need you to understand something very familiar passage of scripture, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28. Paul was saying like this to the church at Rome. He says, all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord, who are called according to the purpose for them. Did you hear what I just said? He says, Romans 8, 20, all things work together for the good to those who are called uh, by the Lord, who are those who are called according to uh, to his to his purpose. In other words, everything that we experience, whatever we go through, whatever tragedy that we face, I want us to know tonight that everything works together for the good. Now, I need you to understand not for what you think good is, but what God their good is. I want you to get that. I, I want you to know, I know I want you to know it doesn't mean you won't have to suffer. It doesn't mean you won't have to go through anything. It doesn't mean you won't have to experience hard times, but God is interested in you and I understanding that everything is going to work together 
for the good. What's the good? Look at verse 29 in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 29. It says, for God knew his people in advance. Oh, I love that. God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. Now, what, what is going on is God allows the struggle. He allows the suffering. He allows the pain because it's going to work out for your good. How it is? Because God is trying to get you to look like his son, Jesus. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The reason you got to go through it and the reason you got to go through suffering and pain and tragedy and circumstances and situations is because God is trying to get you to look more and like Jesus. The more we suffer and stick with Jesus, the more we look more like Jesus. I'm going to say that again. The more you suffer and the more you experience pain, and the more you experience tragedy, and the more you stick with Jesus, the more you look more like Jesus. In other words, God has ordained and put pain on your agenda because God says you don't look like his son. God says, when I look at you, I want to you to resemble my son, Jesus the Christ. I need you to love more like Jesus. I need you to forgive more like Jesus. I need you to have forbearance more like Jesus. I need you to be patient more like Jesus. I need you to be humble more like Jesus. God says, the reason that I got to put you in a place and every now and then I got to put pain and tragedies and circumstances and storms on your agenda is because I need you to look like my son. Now, now I need you to see this because we got to see we can't miss, watch this, the blessing and the burden. Oh my God. I want you to know it, it's crazy because we want more blessings than we do burden. I wish I can y'all be real. It, it, if it was up to us, we will never experience the burden. We will only receive the blessing. But God wants you to know there is something behind the burden. Right now, the thing that you're praying to God about, the thing that you asking God to remove from your life, the thing that you saying, God, I don't know if I can take much more. The thing that you're saying, God, help me out of this. God says you're complaining about the burden, but you don't even, you are missing the blessing in the burden. The burden is not going to break you, but the burden is going to be a blessing to you. That is how you see it. Now, I need to show you four things in 1 Peter 5 that I believe that we've missed. Good God Almighty. I believe tonight, somebody, I don't know why God made the shift tonight. I don't know. I plan on doing something different. But I pray, I promise, I know God, somebody on here tonight is a reason why God made the shift. And I'm here to tell you tonight uh, that, that this word is going to be for you to understand that that's why community is important. That's why that's why a kingdom culture is important because God is trying to talk to you. Now you're praying, whatever you pray to God about, God said, here's your answer tonight. Oh my God. I want you to know the prayer that you just prayed five minutes ago, the prayer you just prayed last night, the prayer you just prayed today, saying, God, give me a God going to give you your answer tonight. I promise you that. God is about to talk to your spirit, speak to you in such a way. It's a matter of not God answering. It's a matter of are you going to listen? Tonight, the question is going to be, are you going to listen uh, at, at what I'm about to tell you? Whatever the situation is, whatever the circumstance is, whatever's been bugging you, whatever the burden is, God is about to give you the answer tonight. I'm going to show you four things tonight to show you. I don't want you to miss the blessing and the burden. Number one, the blessing and the burden. Watch this. Number one, God will restore you. Oh, y'all were looking for something deep. <laughs> I ain't got nothing deep. I'm just got to tell you what I got. That that God will restore you. I, I want you to I want you to notice something that the that when you study scripture, when you study the Bible, uh, it, it, it when you're studying any passage of scripture, you want to make sure you understand uh, the essence of of the particular passage. You want to understand the the genre of the passage of scripture that you are studying. And what we're looking at, we're looking at First Peter. First Peter, my brothers and my sisters, is a letter written by the apostle Peter. Now Peter is writing this letter, and he's writing this letter to a group of Christians who are being persecuted, who are suffering for the cause of Christ. 
So when you read First Peter, I want you to keep in mind you are reading a letter uh, from Peter to the Christians, to a community about suffering. In other words, they were suffering. They was going through some stuff. They were struggling with some stuff. And as they're struggling and being persecuted for the name of Christ, Peter so happened writes them a letter. Okay, don't y'all miss that. that. That he's not writing to an individual. He's writing to a community. <laughs> In other words, he's not writing to just one person or two people, but he's writing to a community of believers. He's writing to a whole church. Now, I need you to understand, because they did not have the honor of possessing a Bible like you and I. They didn't have a Bible like you and I. They just couldn't go in their room and pick up the Bible because the whole Bible was not complete. So in order to hear the letter, they had to show up in the assembly. Okay, don't y'all miss that. In other words, they couldn't go to 1 Peter and start reading 1 Peter and hear, if they wanted to hear encouragement, if they wanted to hear a word from God, they had to come to church in order to hear. And if they didn't come to church and if they didn't come among the assembly, they was going to miss what God had for them. That's a word for us tonight, for those of us who want to be distant and distinct from the community. I need you to know tonight that God designed the community of believers for us to come to together so when the word is being preached that you will be able to hear something that bless your life. Now I want you to see something in 1 Peter uh, he's dealing with suffering. In 1 Peter 1, 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 4, 1 Peter 5 he's dealing with this idea my brothers and sisters of suffering. Uh, Nero who was the governor at this time Nero has set the city on fire and then turned around and blamed it on the Christians. It was a political thing. In other words, the history of that is, he says, you know what? Uh, I'm going to burn this city on fire, but I blame it on, on, on the folk that nobody don't like. Uh, I blame it on those Christ followers called Christians, where Peter had the right that if anybody suffer as a, a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but glorify God in that behalf. And now when you get to 1 Peter chapter 5, oh my God. When you get to 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter is talking to a group of leaders. Uh, he's talking to the elders of the church and tell the elders of the church that you still got to shepherd the flock, even though y'all in suffering. In other words, in spite of the fact that y'all, that you suffering too, and the fight of the fact that y'all are being persecuted, God says, as shepherds, as elders, as bishops, as pastors, you still got to shepherd the flock in spite of persecution. And so I want you to see something. In 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, in verse number, verse, number, um, verse number 6, watch what he said. He says, so humble yourself, watch this, uh, under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Watch this, verse 7. Give all your worries and cares to God. Oh, can I stop right there for a minute? Give all your worries and cares to God. The, uh, the King James Version or other translations will read it like this. Cast all your cares upon me, for I careth for you. The word cast means to throw. In other words, I'm not holding on to my, to my stuff. I'm not holding on to my anxiety. I'm not holding on to what I'm worried. I'm going to put it on Jesus. I'm going to put it on. It's interesting. He said, cast all your cares upon me because I care about your cares. <laughs> he cares about your care. So watch what he said. He says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He is prowling around like a roaring lion and looking for someone to devour. Do you not know that Satan wants to see folk who are weak in faith? He wants to see, and he's after those who faith is not where it needs to be, that he wants to destroy your faith in Jesus Christ. Watch what he says. He says, but stand firm against him and be strong. Watch this, in your faith. Remember that the family of believers all around the world is going through this kind of suffering. Now watch this. Watch the blessing. Don't y'all miss this, Northwest. Watch the blessing and the burden. They're suffering. They're being persecuted. But Peter says that the blessing is going to come as a result of you being restored. I'm going 
to restore you. Watch what he says in verse number 10. He says, in this, in his kindness or grace, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. Don't y'all read that too fast. Notice what verse 10 said, in his kindness, that's his grace, y'all, called you to share in his eternal glory by the means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, okay, y'all, okay, y'all ain't got it, y'all ain't got it yet, that they, they've been suffering. But Peter says, after you have suffered a little while, Y'all ain't got a little while yet. He says, y'all know what little while means? Little while means a little while. Grandma would say it like this, trouble don't last always. That I know you in a season right now. I know you in a struggle right now. I know you are in a storm right now. But he says, it's only going to last a little while. In other words, after you have suffered a little while, while you are in a burden, your burden going to give birth to blessings. Oh, my God. Y'all don't miss the blessing. Don't you miss the blessing because of that burden? Because the blessing, watch what the blessing. He's going to restore you. Watch what he says. He says, in a little while, he will restore. Okay, y'all missed it. I need you to notice something. The word restore, we have studied this word before in Northwest. The word restore is this word, remember, ketatizo. Uh, uh, this, this word restore, it literally means to fit into a place to fulfill a purpose. In other words, that you are suffering but after you have suffered a while, Peter says, God is going to restore you. God is going to catch up to you. God is going to fit you into a place to fulfill a purpose. Now, maybe y'all, maybe y'all missed it, but, but it's interesting because this ketatizo, it gives this ketatizo, this restoring, it gives the idea of fishermen who went out to sea to catch fish, but they didn't use fishing poles. They used a fishing net. And so what they would do, they would take the fishing net and they would throw it into the sea to catch the fish that they desired. After they caught the fish, the net that they used is now damaged. It is now broken. And those who, who paid the fishermen who paid for the net saw value in the fishing net so they, so they didn't throw it away. They took their time to restore it or to catch our tizzle catch it so they can use it again. Okay, y'all missed it. They fishermen, they catch fish. But after they catch the fish, the fish... The nets are now damaged. The nets are now, uh, they've been used to the point where it looked like there's no more use for the net. But because the fishermen, because they paid for the net, they're not going to throw the net away. They're going to take their time, put their hands on it, and they're going to mend it back together. They're going to restore it, although it has been used and damaged. Y'all going to get it right through in here. They use the fishing net. They throw the fishing net in the sea. And after they use, throw the fishing net in the sea, the fishing net looks used and damaged. They don't throw it away because they put their money, they bought the net. So they take their time to catch out it and mend it and restore it back together. If y'all ain't got it yet, I ain't, I'm, I'm not talking about the fishing net. I'm talking about when you go through suffering. I'm talking about when you go through tragedy. I'm talking about when you have been broken and it feels like you've been damaged and it feels like you've been used and it feels like you've been tossed aside and thrown aside. But because God paid for you, 
You vow, you mean too much for God. He don't throw you away like other folk throw you away. So he'll take his time and he'll mend you back together. He'll catch our tezzle you in a, such a way that what looked like it was used and damaged, he'll use you for his purpose. Oh, it's a blessing in being restored. I love it because when you are restored by God, you will encounter God in a way that you never encountered him before. I wish I had a church tonight that 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 when you have been restored by God, when you are restored by God and you, although you've been used, although you've been abused, when folk look at you because you've been remended by the Lord, they gonna look at you and say, you don't look like what you've been through because God is, has have evident himself to mend you back together. Can I tell you tonight that the blessing and the burden is that you've been restored. <laughs> the blessing and the burden is that God didn't throw you away. God didn't do you like some folk did you. God didn't look at you as damaged goods, but God looked at you and said that I can take you and use you in a such a way that'll bless your life. Can I tell you, there are some things that you and I will not learn about God until we suffer. Oh, I know that's a hard word tonight. I want you to know there are some things that you and I will never learn about God until we suffer. I, I know you, I know you, you want to be cute tonight and you want to act like you got it all together, but I want you to know there are some things that you and I will never learn about the Lord until we have been broken until we have been used, until we've been damaged, because God, you will encounter, encounter God in such a way, and nobody will be able to tell you there is no God, because God says, I will introduce myself in a way to you that you've never met me before. There are some things you learn when you broke that you won't learn while you got money in the bank. Oh, I'll wait on somebody tonight. <laughs> I, there are some things, my brothers and my sisters, that you learn when the when the when the when the storm is coming by, that you don't learn when the sun is shining. Amen. I'm gonna be perfect. There were some things I learned about God not uh, after my daddy died that I didn't know when my daddy was living. There, there was a way that I encountered God, and God says that the blessing is in the burden because I gave birth and I restored you. Anybody been restored tonight? Anybody ever been used by God and you feel like you couldn't be used by God? Anybody, if somebody told you God can never use you, God can't do, do nothing with you, and just for the sin that God looked at you and brought you a mighty long way and picked you up and turned your life around and you trying to figure out why you even ask yourself why God is still using me. And God said, because you matter. Oh my God, somebody put in the chat box, I matter to God. God says you matter. And I know you may not think much of yourself. I know you may think that he don't love you because of the suffering. I know you may think that you think God has forgotten about you, but he wants you to know the night that he says the blessing is that I'm going to restore you. Watch this, watch this, y'all watch this. I'm, I'm getting happy reading it. He says, not only is the blessing in restore, he says, I will restore you. But notice what I said. The text says, I will confirm you or I will uh, support you. Now, I need you, I need to look at this word very interesting because he says, after you have suffered a while, watch the first blessing. He going to restore you. But the second blessing is he going to confirm you. The word confirm um, in this particular passion, support and confirm are is, is, is changeable. And it, to, to support, to confirm is a very interesting word because what God is doing in the confirming state, God is saying that you're suffering, you're, you have a burden on your back, but I need you to know that while you are suffering, I'm going to support you. I'm going to confirm you. Now, 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 I don't know how you feel about it because it just makes sense, God. Yahweh, if I'm suffering and I'm in a battle, the best way to support me, God, and to confirm for me is to show up. Can y'all can y'all be real? Have you have you ever been in a place 
where folk told you God is good and God is good all the time. And God told you he's a deliverer and he's a protector and he's a way maker. But when it's time for you to go through yourself, you say, why he ain't showed up for me? Okay, y'all ain't gonna be real tonight. Have you ever, have anybody ever been there with me tonight that says, I hear all the time that he's a good God, that he's make a way out of no way, he's a provider. But when I get in my stuff and I get in my situation, it seems like God is nowhere to be found. But Peter says that he'll support you. It don't make sense, God. Because if you are a supporter, if you're going to confirm me, why in the world, God, won't you show up when I need you to show up when I'm burdened, when I'm struggling? Oh, my God, when I'm crying, when I'm in tears, when I can't go to bed at night, when I get up early in the morning looking at the ceiling, asking myself, God, deliver me. God, if you are a supporter and confirm me, why you ain't showing up? It's interesting. God says, you know why I don't show up? God said, I don't show up in the suffering sometimes when you need me because anybody can, can love me when they ain't in nothing. Anybody can praise me when they ain't going through nothing. Anybody can say God is a way maker when you ain't need him to make a way for you. Anybody can stay with me when they ain't struggling. Anybody can say hallelujah and amen when you're not the one sitting on the front row at the front row. You, anybody can say, I want to see the very one who say they love me when they ain't going through something. I want to see, can they have that same energy when they going through something? Can they still love me? So what I do, I will support you while you in it. Because sometimes I won't take you out, but sometimes I keep you in. Sometimes I'm not a deliverer in that season. Sometimes I'm a keeper in that season. And I keep you while you're still in it. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. I'm here to tell you, you want to shout about him being a deliverer, but I shout about him being a keeper. He kept, kept my mind when I was going through my stuff. He kept me in the midnight hour. And I'm not just shouting about that he's a deliverer. I'm shouting about he's a keeper. So watch this. He supports you. Because think about it. If you never go through suffering, you really can't say with assurance that he's a keeper and a supporter. Think about it. How you gonna say he's a healer when you ain't never been sick? How you gonna say that he's a way maker when you didn't when you never need him to make a way for you? How you know that he that he'll that he'll be a bridge of troubled waters and you ain't never have to cross the bridge? How, how is it that you can say, I trust the Lord with all my heart, but you ain't never been in a place between fear and faith. If you ain't never been there, you all, you trying to make it on everybody else's testimony. But bro, man, sister, girl, God is trying to grow you up and you it's about time you have your own testimony. I don't need mama testimony. I don't need daddy testimony. I need my brother testimony. I don't need grandma testimony. I got my own testimony and I know he's a keeper. He'll support. So watch what he said. He says, the blessing is in the burden because what I'm trying to show you is I'm a support. I'm a keep. I confirm you while you're in it. It's one, it's one thing when you're in something and God is there to show you, I ain't going to leave you. God shows up and supports you even while you are in it. Okay, okay. I grew up with an old school daddy and Sister Kelly, it would amaze me some things my daddy would do and daddy taught me. It was amazing how my daddy would, would show me. My daddy would say stuff like, son, uh, it's hard, but it's fair. You got to suck it up like it's part of the air. He would, he would tell me stuff like, you got to keep going no matter what. And, and I, I, remember, I remember one time in, in, my, in my mom and daddy's house, we had a, a chair. And, and the chair, my brothers and my sister, it's interesting that the chair, uh, when you sit in it, one of the legs was broken on it. Anybody knowing that maybe y'all ain't never had a chair like that. And, and when you sat down, it leaned to the side. And it, it was leaning side to side. And in my mind, I'm thinking daddy gonna buy a new chair because the chair is, is the, the, the leg is broken. And if the leg is broken, to me, in my mind, it just makes sense to buy a new chair. But daddy said he's not going to buy a new chair because the seat is good. The leg is just broken. So daddy would take some car, a car 
uh, some car wood box and he'll, he'll scrape it out into a, 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 a square shape and he'll take that, that box and put it underneath the chair. And he put it underneath the, the chair to stabilize the chair, to support the chair. The chair is still broken, but the chair still can be used because the chair got a support system. Y'all ain't talking back to me tonight. See, I'm going to tell you tonight that what God wants to do, he wants to confirm you. He wants to stabilize you. He wants to support you. He oftentimes, sometimes won't take you out of it. But God will be a support. He'll be the one who will be around you and he'll be underneath you. And you can be like the songwriter and say, oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. And you need a God who will support you. He says, here is the blessing. The blessing and the burden is that God, he'll restore you. The blessing and the burden is that God, will confirm you or support you or to make you stable. But thirdly, that that the blessing and the burden and God will strengthen you. I'm going to get happy by myself. Oh my God. Notice what he said. He says, after you have suffered a little while, watch this, he will restore you. He will support you. Watch this. He will strengthen you. Somebody put it in the chair, Bob, strengthen, strengthen. Now, now, it's interesting that God, you have gave me, the blessing is you have restored me. I'm a, I'm a better person now. You, you confirm and you support me. But now, God, you're going to strengthen me. Because how many of you know there are moments and times where you don't even know how to be strong? That can, can you be honest that, that the Bible, Ephesians 6 says, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. It's interesting. It didn't say feel strong. It say be strong. <laughs> See, some of y'all trying to still feel strong when y'all to be strong in the power of his might. And, and what he wants to do is interesting. He wants to strengthen you. It, it, it's the same word where, where, where uh, Paul says, uh, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, I need you to understand, in order to get strength, you first got to mean it. You got to first got to admit that you're weak. <laughs> So you got to stop acting so strong and trying to act like you don't need nobody and like you don't need the community. You don't need God. He says, in other words, you got to first admit that you that you need you. You're weak and you need some strength. And it's interesting that it's almost like it's the word strengthen. It gives this, this picture, this idea of being infused. Somebody say infusion, infusion. So you got to be infused. In other words, in other words, that it gives the imagery of me being sick and weak. And now the doctors have to hook me up to an IV in order to me to be infused with medicine that will strengthen me. Nothing happens if I'm in the hospital and I need an IV. Nothing happens just because I desire to be strong. Nothing happens just because I want to be strong. Nothing happens even if I pray that God going to heal me and I need to be strong. It only happens when I connect myself to the IV so I can be strengthened and infused. The only way that can happen is that I got to be connected to the IV. And if I'm not connected to the IV, I don't care how much I desire it, no matter how much I want it, I will never maintain my strength if I'm not connected to the IV. Y'all missed your shout tonight. I want you to know he strengthens you, but I need you to know the reason some of us have not been strengthened because we have been disconnected. And if you're going to be strengthened, I'm here to tell you tonight, you need to be connected to him and his body. You need to be connected to that to, to the head and the body. You need to be connected to Christ and his church. And the reason, uh, my brothers and my sisters, that you're feeling weak, 
The reason you feel like you can't go on in your suffering. The reason you keep crying yourself to sleep tonight because you are disconnected. But I need you to know tonight that if you're going to get this blessing that's in the burden, you better find yourself connected to Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. Now I need you to notice something. It's infused. I need him to infuse me. It doesn't matter how much you pray saying, God, help me. It don't matter how, much, how many times you, you desire and say, God, I want to be stronger. God says the only way you're going to get strong is that you got to be connected. In other words, when we ask God for strength, what we're asking God for is to be our personal trainer. Okay, y'all follow that? That, that, that? that guys who get muscles and becomes, becomes healthy and strong, they don't get strong because, and they don't get muscles just because they say they desire it. They got to go into the gym. They got to discipline their bodies. They got to they gotta be on a certain diet in order to obtain the strength that they're asking for. So the next time, ain't nothing wrong with asking for strength because we all need strength. But I want you to know when you ask for strength, Say, God, I'm ready for you to be my personal trainer. And every now and then, God will stand over the spiritual bar and God will see how much you can lift. He'll see how much you can bend press spiritually. And when it gets too heavy, God knows how to lighten your load. But he's trying to strengthen you in such a way that while you are in your suffering, you will say, God, I'm learning from this test. I'm learning from this storm. I'm learning in this way that, God, I need you to strengthen me. Oh, oh I, that's a word tonight. That, that, that's one more. I need to show you, and I'm done. Don't, don't miss the blessing and the burden because God will restore you. God will confirm you. God will strengthen you. But watch this. God will establish you. Oh, write, write that down. God, God will establish you. Watch what he did. After you have suffered a while, he will restore you. After you have suffered a while, he will support you. After you have suffered a while, he will strengthen you. And watch this. And he will place you on a firm foundation. In other words, that the blessing is that God you're going to establish me or us, you, you implore. In other words, to lay a foundation. Oh, my God. In other words, God, what you trying to do? I'm trying to lay a foundation because the storm going to come. Tears are going to flow every now and then from your eyes. You're going to be in a season. But I need you to understand something. I got to lay a firm foundation. I want you to watch this. Matthew chapter 7, and we'll close with this. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number uh, 24 through 27. I want you to notice what, some, what, what happens here. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. It says, Jesus says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follow it is wise, like a person, watch this, who builds a house on a solid rock. Through, through the rain comes and torrents and the flood water rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and flood came and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse. What a mighty crash. I need you to see this. God wants to establish you. How does he establish you? He establishes you through listening to his word. In other words, when God's word is taught and God's word is preached and God's word is read, God is looking for us to listen, take heed to his word. I know I'm right about it. Because in this particular passage in Matthew 7, in this particular passage, Jesus, as he ends the Sermon on the Mount, he talks about two groups of people. The problem is they are not different based upon their position. They're both in the same condition. They both are in the same circumstance. But one group heard the word and the other group didn't hear the word. 
In other words, storm gonna hit all us all. It just if a storm ain't hit your house yet, it just ain't your time yet. But it's gonna come a day where tag you gonna be it. I hope you. I, I know things may be well right now. You everything you may be living high on the hog. You may feel like nothing. But I want you to know sooner or later, a storm is gonna knock on your door. And he says that I want to show you two individuals, one who built a house on sand and one who built it on a rock. The one who built it on a rock, listened to my words. They heard my sayings and took heed to it. So when the storms of life came, when the tragedies of life came, when the, when the rain began to pour, they took, took a stand. They, it didn't, their house didn't fall because they was established. But there was those who heard the same words, heard the same sermon, was in the same Bible study you was in, went to the same, read the same scriptures you read, and they didn't take heed and listen and did something different. And when the storm came, when tragedy happens, they didn't stick with God. Th this is what I want you to know tonight. He wants to establish you and I. But the only way he can establish us is taking heed to his word. I want to be like the wise man who take heed to his word, even when the word to me don't make sense. Come on, y'all can be honest. There are moments and times, logically, what God tells us in his word, we can't make sense out of it. There are times when we're trying to understand why God said what he said, and we're not going to understand it. But I'm here to tell you, be like the wise man, because when the storm comes, and it's going to come, you want to be like the wise man. Don't build your house on sand, because sand ain't going to stand. And so here's the word tonight. Here's the word, and I'm closing. God don't want us to miss the blessing in the bird. I, I don't know who needs to hear this, this word tonight. Maybe I know for sure God spoke to you. God spoke to somebody tonight. But if you have been praying about something, you've been asking God about something, God said, don't miss the blessing in the bird. God want to restore you. God wants to confirm you. God wants to strengthen you. And God wants to establish you. Now, it's interesting. This is Peter, y'all. Peter is writing this letter. Now, the interesting thing about Peter, Peter didn't always have it right. Y'all know Peter. This is cussing Peter. This is Peter who denied Jesus. This is the Peter who, who, who lacked faith when he was, he was walking on the water and all of a sudden he, this is this Peter. And, and Jesus is using this same Peter to tell some more saints, listen, God want to do something for you. That lets me know God still can use you in spite of you. Oh my God. I'm so happy tonight that I still I may have problems, but I still got purpose. I'm so happy tonight that God still can use me while I'm in my flesh. And every now and then when I mess up, God says, there's still something I can do with you. And tonight, I don't know who you are, but dry your tears tonight. Dry your tears. God wants to see you move in faith. God wants to see you not just have church. He wants us to be this community of believers who represent him. I told y'all this before, that Jesus is in heaven representing you. And we are on earth representing him. You see the connection? In other words, he's on the right side of, on the right side of God. That's why I say, I'm already in heaven. I just ain't died yet. I'm already there. Jesus is on the right side of God right now representing me. And I'm on earth representing him. We are the body of Christ. That's why we call a body. We're his finger, we're his hands, his feet, his elbows. His, we're, we're all of that on earth. Watch this. I'm, I'm here to tell you, he wants to establish you. So I'm here to tell you, maybe God ain't moved yet. Not because you waiting on God, but God waiting on you. <laughs> what, what makes you think you waiting on God? Now, God says, I went on, you know, and it struck me. It struck me, uh, Sister Kelly, in my study, because something we often I said we got we gonna we're gonna make God first. We're gonna make God first. God gonna be first in my life. God gonna be first in my life. And I thought about it. Maybe God is not interested in being first in your life. Maybe God wants to be like. <laughs> maybe maybe God wants to be like. He may he said the Bible says when those of us who are hidden in Christ, when Christ our life has appeared. In other words, I don't want, God says, I am life. Maybe, maybe I have not became life for you yet. 
Maybe you still got me on, on, on number two list and number three. Maybe I'm not like yet. It's the reason why you still struggling. And you keep looking at your watch and God said, no, mm -mm, I'm waiting on you. I'm trying to establish you. And as quick as you can be established, years later, you'll begin to look and say, God, now I understand. And now when God perfects you and grow you up, and then you can share with somebody else and say, this is what God did for me. And the same thing that God did for me, he can do for you. May God bless you tonight. I pray that something was said tonight that may bless you in a mighty way. I pray that as the word went forth, uh, it will not fall on deaf ears, but we will be everything God need us to be even on tonight. Uh, he saved me, he raised me, his love so amazing. I've been trying my Lord to